Hi everyone, my name is Pavitra V, Department of Chemistry. Today we are going to discuss a topic called Loss of Photochemistry. In that, first we will discuss its definition. Photochemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with the chemical process that are caused by the absorption of light energy. Or, photochemistry is the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter resulting into a physical change or into a chemical reaction. When we subject the matter or the sample to the electromagnetic radiation, there is some physical changes or chemical changes takes place in the sample. So this study is called photochemistry. We have so many laws in photochemistry in that first one is grothes dropper law. This states that only those radiations which are absorbed by a reacting substance or a system are responsible for producing chemical changes. That is, according to this law, all radiations are not bringing the chemical changes in the sample. Some are increases only the kinetic energy of the molecule and while some radiations are re-emitted, that is flu fluorescence. Fluorescence is nothing but when you are subjected a sample into a radiation, the molecule present in the ground state will absorb the energy in the radiation and get excited to the higher energy state. In that higher energy state, the molecule is highly unstable, so it comes back to the ground state by emitting absorbed radiation. This is nothing but fluorescence. Uh, this is the spontaneous or sudden re-emission of absorbed radiation. Next we will discuss the second law that is Stark-Einstein law or Einstein law of photochemical equivalence. This law states that each molecule of absorbing substance absorbs one photon or one quantum of radiation in primary process. Photon or quantum is nothing but it is a packet of energy present in the radiation. Now it is explained as A is a molecule acquiring energy by absorbing a photon. Photon energy is equal to E is equal to H mu. So when A is absorbed a photon energy H mu it is activated as A star. This energy of photon is E is equal to H mu, where mu is the frequency of absorbing photon and H is the Planck's constant with the value 6 in 6.624 into 10 power minus 34 joule second. Next we have a definition of quantum yield which is also called quantum efficiency. It is defined as the ratio of number of molecules reacting in a given time to the number of quanta absorbed in the same time. That is, phi is equal to number of molecules undergoing the process divided by number of quanta absorbed. This is, there will be a value of quantum yield that is unit. According to Einstein law of photochemical equivalence, in a primary process, each molecule will absorb one quanta of energy. So hence the quantum yield should be unit. That is, if there is a hundred molecules in a sample, it will absorb hundred quanta of energy. So number of molecules is hundred and quanta of energy absorbed is hundred. Hundred divided by hundred will give you one. So actually it should be one. But it is not happening. It will vary. Sometimes we will get a high quantum yield or a low quantum yield. Reasons for high quantum yield is the product of primary process may collide with the second molecule and transfer the energy. Like that, that second molecule will collide with third molecule and transfer the energy and so on. Thus, the chain reaction is started and the number of reacting molecules will be increased. This is the reason for high quantum yield. Sometimes, due to the formation of intermediate products which acts as a catalyst. Catalyst is nothing but which alters the rate of reaction. Here, it increases the rate of reaction, the intermediate product. Hence, there will be a chances of 
getting a high quantum yield. Sometimes there is an exothermic reaction from which temperature of the system increases. So as the temperature increases, there will be more activated molecules and the quantum yield will be increased. For example, in the reaction between hydrogen and the halogens. Next, there is a, some of the reasons for low quantum yield also. That is, phi is less than 1. In some reactions, deactivation of activated molecules takes place in primary process before transferring to the product. Sometimes the activated molecules will collide themselves or collide with the walls of the container and loses the energy. And uh, this is reason for low quantum yield and also the product of primary process may react back to form reactants. The products will undergo irreversible or a reversible reaction to give back reactants. Product will go reversible reaction to give reactants. For example, decomposition of hydrogen iodide and HBr and also polymerization of anthracene is an example of for low quantum. Then further we will discuss actually what are the factors that are affecting the quantum yield. See the first point, all primary photochemical process is actually an endothermic process. We know that if the temperature of the system increases, the quantum yield also increases. If the temperature of the system decreases, the quantum yield decreases. Next, the second point is, we know energy absorbed by a molecule is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Hence, the quantum yield will be higher at lower wavelength. And also, quantum yield is lower at higher wavelength. Or it can be explained in terms of energy also. If the energy of the radiation is more, then the quantum yield is more. If the energy is less, the quantum yield is less. See, that is explained in the next point in terms of intensity. The speed of photochemical reaction is proportional to the intensity of light. Hence, quantum yield increases with intensity or quantum yield decreases with low intensity. Next, see the last point. The addition of inert gas in photochemical reaction alters the quantum yield because when we add an inert gas into the system, the pressure increases. We know from the law, as the pressure increases, temperature decreases. This decreased temperature becomes or uh, affect the excited molecules to become deactivated. Thus, the quantum yield will be altered or lowered. The addition of inert gas have an effect on quantum yield. Next, we will move to the chemical actinometers. Actinometer is a uh, used to determine the fluorescence quantum yield need an accurate measure of photon intensity. It is used to measure the photon intensity. So, a chemical actinometer uses a reaction with known quantum yield and known absorption coefficient at a given wavelength to determine the light intensity. For example, we have uranyl oxalate actinometer as an example in which we are taking an oxalic acid that is COOH, COOH that is H2C2O4 when it is subjected to H mu or uh, photon radiation then in the presence of UO2 2 plus ion, we will get water, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide liberation. Quantum yield is given as quantum yield at 254 nanometer wavelength is 0 0.602 and at 330 nanometer wavelength, the quantum yield is 0 0.561. Next example is benzophenone and benzhydrox hydrol actinometer here two in between two benzene ring there is a carbonyl group that is benzophenone and in between two benzene ring there is a CHOH that is hydroxyl group uh, that is benzhydrol it gives the product like this and uh, this is the quantum yield 0 0.68 next one is uh, two hexanone actinometer which undergo nourish type 2 reaction which have a quantum yield value 0 
for 313 nanometer wavelength. This is the example for chemical actinometers.